This is Twit. Increasingly, it looks like、uh, across the, the world, there's a lot more attention, a lot more understanding, maybe not of the technology itself, but of this thought that AI could someday be so good that what the, what the heck does that mean about the people who are in power, the countries who are in power, how, you know, how the lives for the people living within those countries, how are they impacted? There's just a number of things happening right now.、Um, the US. Commerce Department, this was last Tuesday,、uh, requested public comment on creating accountability measures for AI. So they're seeking people, and we talked about this a little bit、uh, and on This Week in Google, but they're seeking the input of people、uh, who understand and know the potential. Kind of,、uh, you know, <laughs> the potential path that AI is on and what it could lead to. What are the right questions to be asking so that? On a governmental level, they can create, potentially create guardrails around the development of AI. And this is just one example. You know, in Europe,、uh, they're creating a task force,、uh, Europe's national,、uh, the European Data Protection Board, the EDPB,、um, is. Uh, looking to kind of get a get a better understanding of、uh, creating this like this、uh, group to really understand the development of AI. China's doing the same thing. They're mandating、uh, security reviews、uh, for AI. So I, I don't know if that means that they're one step ahead. You know, they're out of the analysis phase and they're more in the reactive phase. But everybody seems to be、uh, understanding. That this looming development of AI, where we are right now, and, and the explosive growth that it's seen, especially in the last six months, is leading to something, and we don't know what it is, but we want to understand what it is and possibly control where that is headed. So, Dan, let's start with you because you're, you're writing about this stuff a lot. Like, where, where is your mind when it,、uh, when it comes to this movement, this kind of like all, you know? <laughs> All encompassing worldwide、uh, movement towards respecting the power of AI and wanting to put guardrails there. What are your thoughts? Well, I hope we can regulate it better than we did social media and have a little more nuanced and sophisticated take by our elected representatives than we have had in the past.、Uh, and you just,、uh, you've got a take? Yeah, I wanted to ask you, Dan, because government is wanting to try to. Figure this stuff out. And you've been speaking with experts. Actually, it's two things.、Um, from a government standpoint, experts that are out there that you've been speaking to, are they willing to go to government and try to help you know, figure out a way to, to do some type of regulation or set up better guardrails? Or are they just saying, no, we don't want to get the government involved? Because when the government gets involved, things get Weird and sometimes really, really screwed up. And secondly, you mentioned from an enterprise perspective with AI. You know, we've been speaking about AI for, she's three months now. I swear it seems like three months. And the stories are either really, really big, rah, 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 where, where AI is awesome, or gloom and doom on the, on the other side of things, never really much of a middle ground.、Um, but what on the enterprise side of things is, is making this. Something that could be really, really practical. Because speaking as a creative, I could see where AI can hop in and make things better for me.、Mm. And I have used it recently for things to make things make it better in a workflow standpoint. But enterprise,、uh, I, I can't really wrap my head around it, probably because I've been away from it for quite a while now. But what, what is AI going to do on the enterprise side of things? Well, you know, and、um, actually, I'm, I'm very curious when it comes to regulation, I, I don't know. But I, to your point about being a creative, in fact, I sent Jason Heiner a text message maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago about how I'm using Chat GPT to write stories. Now, they're not writing stories for me. It's、right. poor quality if you try to do that. But、um, a, a lot of my reporting is interviews with primary subjects. And any reporter can tell you, like, okay, you, you conduct an interview, but then you have to. Often transcribe the interview, and then you have to pull out quotes, and then you have to pull out the salient points, and then you have to create an outline.、Yeah. And, you know, that's the first thing I do is create my outline.、Yep. But, you know, that whole process can take several hours.、Um, I, and for some people, I'm a slow writer. So for some people, it can take longer than that. What I have used ChatGPT for is hey, please summarize this. 
um, transcript, pull out the five most interesting quotes. And of course you go back and you check it and you, you know, change it. It's not always the best, mm-hmm. but it mm-hmm. does a pretty good job of finding those quotes and, and then pull out the main points of what this person talked about. And I'm telling you, I've used it for every single story I've written for Jason in that same way. And it's mm-hmm. great. It saves a ton of time. It compresses the amount of time I would spend doing those kind of routine maintenance tasks and allows me to think about the story. And I think (laughs) write better stories because I'm spending more time writing and less time uh, doing the, all of the, the mechanics. Yep. Yep. But I'm curious what Jason has to say. Heiner has to say about uh, uh, the enterprise, because that's, uh, I mean, that's going to be a whole huge shift. Yeah. So, it really comes down to one thing primarily, which is automation. Okay. Um, and they've been working on this for a long time, right? And part of, I think, what the new level of generative AI could do is we, we've been able to automate like one little thing here, one little thing here, yeah, one little thing here. And I think that this is like, what we're seeing is like the ability to create a string of these automations that then all of a sudden is like you've taken a big chunk of the, the really repetitive mind numbing, Mm -hmm. you know, work out of it. And when we we really thought this was going to happen and it really has been happening with manufacturing for, uh, you know, a long time. Uh Um, but now it's happening with a lot of the, um, a lot of the knowledge work, right? Because we're realizing chat GPT is helping us to realize to just the point that Dan did that there's a lot of repetitive things that are somewhat easy to, to, to automate. And Dan's mm-hmm. latest interview, <laughs> um, Gertzel says, he says, what we've discovered is you don't have to be particularly innovative to, um, automate a lot of knowledge work. <laughs> work <laughs> shockingly, you know, I, I'm summing it up. That's like my, you know, summing it, but watch the interview. It's an, it's an awesome interview. It's only 20 minutes. It, you will be thankful that you did. But I think his point is that there's a lot of opportunities for automation that really were kind of not on our radar. And now we're realizing, you know, like that, I would be interested to hear the ones that you're using and you, you alluded to the fact that it's, it's enabled you to streamline a couple things with your creative workflows. There, there's some things in inside of Photoshop or or inside of like um, uh, DaVinci Resolve that utilizes AI in the, the GPU on the on your computer. Uh, in, inside of Photoshop, if you're trying to cut someone out of a background, that used to be a tedious process of going through and making the selection properly, especially if they had hair, unlike myself, yeah. um, and pulling them out cleanly to put them on a different type of background. And now it is literally one click and it's done in about three seconds of analysis and Adobe Sensei, it's AI will, will fix it and pull it, pull it out for you. And it's done. And on DaVinci Resolve doing that inside of video, it's even more uh, uh, task intensive there. But with the AI, it's literally just click and drag and it does a selection and pulls it right out within a couple of seconds. It's, it's really fascinating. And you're talking about automation and enterprise. It sort of reminds me of, the recent episode of This Week in Enterprise Tech here on Twit TV, um, there was a story, a security story, where some employees were terminated, but yet their credentials were still available to them down the road months later because there was a checklist that got missed, you know, and maybe they couldn't log into this box or server or what have you, but they could log into this one and things like that. And I'm, mm. I was thinking about, because I haven't seen Microsoft Active Directory in probably 10 years now. And I remember we had processes and procedures and going through and making sure everybody got ticked off. Uh, The boxes got ticked off um, when people were terminated because there was all types of group policies and and security measures for, you know, they could access this folder and that folder and so forth. And I was like, I thought you could script a lot of that stuff, but apparently you can't script everything. But if AI can come in and help do, I guess, a bunch of scripts <laughs> and put, and put yeah. it into one, maybe that's, that's a game changer. Oh, hey, that's a really nice iPhone you have there. You totally picked the right color. <laughs> 
Hey, since you do use an iPhone and maybe use an iPad or an Apple Watch or an Apple TV, well, you should check out iOS Today. It's a show that I, Micah Sargent, and my co-host Rosemary Orchard host every Tuesday right here on the Twit Network. It covers all things iOS, tvOS, HomePod OS, Watch OS, iPad OS. It's all the OSs that Apple has on offer. And we love to give you tips and tricks about making the most of those devices, checking out great apps and services, and answering your tech questions. I hope you check it out. <laughs>